let's try to talk real time. Like what, cause you just brought up that you like, you struggle with this when you're mixing your own stuff. What, yeah. What I find is in order to get loudness and clarity, my two go-tos are add high end, subtract low mids. Those are like the, and I think that comes from working under Eric Valentine, recording a lot of organic instruments where if you want things to sound modern in the 2000s, you want a rock record to sound contemporary, you're doing a lot of compression, but uh, mostly really it's scooping EQ and boosting the right kind of high end. And it's actually yeah. from some of our conversations, thinking about the high, the super high end, maybe like 8K and up as much more distinct areas of like, 8k is different than 10k is different than a bell curve is different than a shelf and you know if i have too mm -hmm. many things up there it gets too busy the pmcs have actually been very helpful for that um listening to a lot of other uh listening to a lot of other mixes and going oh that's where the vocal sits it's actually you know one of the one of the great things was going over to tzio's place and um listening on his setup which i think are the six twos um and you know uh smoking a lot of cannabis and then listening to loud hip hop mixes, but hearing where he was placing vocals and the high end of the vocal versus the snare drum. And obviously I'm not doing a lot of straight hip hop stuff, but like some of those, just hearing where the high end of the vocal speaks against the hats, against the, the high end of the snares, which I always have thought of as kind of in the same area of brightness, but mm -hmm. how those things can be distinct have helped me a lot. But then I'm, I'm always I'm always struggling with low mids. I mean, I think part of that for me is also I continue to move between setups. And I think actually mm. the, the subby low end, like, you know, we've talked about monitoring setups and how much the room affects um, the room affects the sound of the low end. But I think the the part that I have a less of a handle on is that like 150 to 300 range because a room fucks with that a lot too it's the, a like lot. The, the the second octave room mode or whatever and i find that to be very challenging if the room isn't right and so i haven't gotten to a setup that i've had for years where i know what's happening there exactly and i'm always playing with you know the low end of a snare drum the low notes of a guitar the higher notes of a bass mm -hmm. the ha higher harmonics of 808s i find that area very challenging and i tend to over scoop it to get clarity um it's just it's, well, it's, it's constantly a challenge you would also think that if you were to leave it alone and do the right uh, additions in the high end that you're talking yeah. about or the high mids you might not have to work as hard right um i i think that that's a different approach like proper gain staging you can do this you know what what are your takeaways from listening on the pmc is both at tzio's room but also just your experience um, in your spaces where you're placing hi-hats, where are you placing vocals? Like you're, cause you're thinking of it as a producer, as an arranger. So am I as yeah. a mixer, but I'm doing it later. So that's already, yeah, I'm also thought a out high percentage me. of the time. I'm high percentage of the time. I'm not thinking as a mixer at all, because if I turn on my mixer brain, it takes away from the creative brain. And that's, that's actually the, that's, I mean, I love the challenge and this is why I love being in my position and not just a mixer or just a songwriter or whatever. I like going between them and that challenge keeps me excited about it. But if I spend too much time thinking about the sample I'm working on while I'm writing and producing, it just fucks up the ability to get a great song or get the yeah. excitement in the room. So I have to basically turn on my mixing brain some percentage of the time. The high end stuff is really interesting because we've talked about it and I know it's others have talked about it as well. Like the way that some of those Kendrick vocals sound where they're actually um, low passed a little bit. Super I mean, playing filter. With some of those things. Yeah. And it, and it you know, I, I sent you, uh, you, you gave me some great thoughts on a, on a mix for this artist, Georgia mm -hmm. Twin, uh, which you just, I forgot the master. I'll send it to you. Dale did an amazing job oh, nice. on it. Um, but um, that was one of those things where I was trying to get different vocal sounds for different sections. Mm -hmm. And so trying different filtering. And it was actually really great because I went into it knowing and talking with Georgia and working with her that we want some different characters in different parts and through different songs. You haven't heard other songs, but that opened up um, a lot of thinking about how can I make a vocal in a quote unquote pop record sound great but sound distinct from each other. And it caused me to try to voice things in different places. Some mm -hmm. of the songs have some high passing and where's the clarity? Well, it's not exactly in the low mids in this one because there's a lot of high pass. In this other one, it's actually gonna be filtered down a little bit. So how do we find the mid range? Much more Eric Valentine style, like the vocals mm -hmm. really sp speaking in the mid range. So it's, I've opened it up a lot, um, but it's still that, that low mid is definitely still a challenge. But um, one thing you said earlier, which I've been doing a lot more is, 
I'm not doing as much cutting in the low mids. I'm doing more, um, you know, dynamic EQ, multiband compression stuff to just contain it a little bit and then let it live there. Yes. That's, that tends to be the way that, again, when, you, when I then listen to it on the phone or translate it, it starts to like, okay, there's chords, there's harmonic content, that sort of thing. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, all of this content is free. There's no secret knowledge here. There's no Patreon. We don't read ads. We don't have sponsors. We're just trying to build a knowledge base. All that we ask in return is that you share it with somebody. Thanks so much.